period uh, period uh, period uh, period uh. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Chucky. Cheese? No, the king. And this here is Frank, the lumberjack. And um, it's a good day to be alive. How you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the... <laughs> How funny would that be? You ever see these like silly little gimmicky things? If you sure. just did have a podcast and every single day you just said hello to each other. That's it? And then you and went then, off? Yeah. It was like... And people would stumble upon, upon the channel and right. say, what is this? Yeah. I don't know. Some, sometimes those work and sometimes they don't. And you never know what would what what appeals to the people. What appeals to the people, what appeals to the masses. Like, but, have you seen this girl and she has braids and she's doing... When I say, eh, uh, eh, uh. It's like so dumb. But everyone is stitching it and they're just loving it. And it's like... You would never, um, I think it's pe- period, uh, 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 yeah, hello. Uh, you know, the, in mass, they have the welcoming and they hug. No. Well, in mass, when the how you doing? How you doing? Peace be with you. No. Now you now turn to your neighbors and say what's up. That's peace be with you. Yeah. It's not welcoming. It's not hugging. And I'm do some s- churches not hug? Uh, p- people hardly handshake anymore because of germs. But uh, and also they don't say peace be with you. They say peace yeah they do say peace be with you but they uh, and they don't say also with you they say with your spirit oh well it's not really i, I feel like i never even say anything that's good that thin-lipped well now you can do that because like i said of germs people just look around and and they head nod but some churches i'm guessing will will hug afterwards yeah i don't like it and maybe i should like maybe that's part of it is like you need to be more comfortable with it but it may, it's like one of these things that uh, in the beginning of school, when they have ice break, go around the room, icebreakers. Yeah. It just feels like that at a church. The hugging or the p- peace, peace giving. Yeah, it's like I sort of pretend like hey, we're all in this to not talk to each other. But, but then I guess you know, if church is a community. Then there's that. No, there's something for everybody. There's something for everybody. Somewhere for ev- everyone, I guess. Everything has a place, and everyone has a home. Not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh golly gosh we're just mid-september what day exactly in the 20s in the 20s it's the week of the 20s you know what i think it might be the first day of um it might be the first day of fall okay right yeah mm-hmm. first day of fall yeah autumn 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 is that the, the, the true name for it i'm not sure i know that, like they fall say- does seem a little improper oh right because the fall. leaves are falling right, autumn and why is it the only one that has a nickname I wish they all did. Or you know what? I wish, I think actually, here's here's my my two cents on it. Fall is for autumn. I think spring is a nickname. Because you're springing into. Yeah, like give me give me a real name for it. Ver, like the Verena. Yeah, you're falling in spring. Well, it, fall is fall. Is it? Uh, uh, spring is things are springing the, up. For some kind of equinox, like the ver. I feel like the word's ver. Like yeah. I think Verano or something might be like Spanish or Latin for Yeah, well, German spring. is German's fruling. I like that. Fruling, yeah. But I think I might, I think fru might be flower and ling. Like it might be like flowering is the same thing. Autumn is the name of, um, that we just had uh, the big, big, big funeral, worldwide funeral on Monday. And the autumn, queen. The queen. Queen Elizabeth. The queen. The queen of everyone's lifetime unless you are over... 70 because she was yeah. queen for 70 yeah. years um autumn i believe autumn is the name of her grandson's wife and they got a divorce but like unless you're in the main 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 eye it's not you know what i'm saying like they'll, they'll say like oh i can't believe that charles and diana <clears throat> got a divorce or these relationships but they got a divorce 
Who? Charles and Diana. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. I thought she died when they were married. No. So that's why they sent the hit. No. Um, they were married and then they separated, but they didn't get a divorce. But the way she was gallivanting across the globe, um, the Queen Elizabeth, the dearly departed Queen Elizabeth, told Charles, you have to divorce her because you, you all have children and like what is really going on? And he had, who now is Camille uh, Cabello. Camilla, who is his queen, um, Queen Camilla, who he had before Diana. So Diana was an arranged marriage. Oh, really? Yeah. This is all so new to me. Okay, so you can ask me because I know it all. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so Queen Elizabeth. Wait, wait. Can okay. I tell you what I thought first? Oh, sure. And then you'll correct and, and probably a lot of people thought that. Because I'm young. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gen. Well, I'm young too, but like I studied it. <laughs> you, you, you're you one of those people that have I was seen. Fr- I was friends with the queen. You've seen the queen yeah. go into power. N- yeah, I knew King George. I always that. know that. Prince Di- Princess Diana was beloved, mm-hmm. but also a little skin, a little too. Yeah. So I always thought she was sort of more of a uh, uh, independent Kate Middleton, and so he wasn't supposed to marry her, and she was young and fun, and the Queen was like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, get rid of her," even though she was spunky. So now you're telling me she was arranged, which yes. means she was the proper person to become yes Queen yes, and. Okay. So, um, Charles and Camilla, the current queen, the current king and queen, were ch- were childhood sweethearts. Oh, yeah. And um, they were a very much in love. And Charles wanted to marry Camilla. The queen supposedly said, "I don't like that. I don't. I don't like that um, arrangement for you." So he had to tell Camilla that you'll never be queen. So she went off and got married. Yeah, but they the love was so strong between them that they never stopped uh, st- seeing each other. Uh, Princess Diana was from a good family, the Spencer family, uh, <laughs> royal family, and um, so it was an arranged marriage. She was very young, and they hardly met. Oh. But she was like, "Okay, I'll get married." But she was so young and so naive that she thought that the love would just be there and that they would be this wonderful family. Here's Charles agreeing to it because he was part of a royal mindset of you have to do what is best. There was the duty, but she could never be the one he truly loved. Right. When his heart belonged to another. And she's married. To, she, she was married to um, Camilla Parker Bowles, um, general, or he, he, I think he was a military, P- Parker Bowles. So he said, fine, like, I'll marry her. So he tried, but he never really was completely there for her. She felt that. So she became very depressed and oh. very um, a very sympathetic character because she was very young. She's much younger than him. And she kind of got into this whirlwind and then was in it and then was like, wow, I'm never going to have the, that, that love story that I thought I was going to have. Yeah. Okay. So she was very public with her depression, and which is fine, but she was very... Um, she was, she was very uh, demonstrative and it was very obvious. She would be crying in public. Uh, and um, there was, of course, lots of investigators which found out that he still had this, um, which is now a mistress. Yeah. And so um, she she just got more and more upset. And like I said, they so they so they separated. OK. Then she started getting boyfriends and, and um, much like her son now, she was giving article uh, it, magazine interviews in different countries. So the queen was like, it's over. Yeah. You have to divorce her. Divorced her. She lost her title. We call her Princess Diana now, but she lost being a princess by divorcing the prince. Yeah. People are so, like you just said again, that maybe the queen had something to do with, um, God forbid, you know, her death. If the, the, the Princess Diana that we love and the William and Harry, who was their offspring, that we love. And the reason that all this beauty and life was brought back into the royal family is because of that arranged marriage Uh you know because if if he had just married camilla we probably wouldn't be caring at this point about any of them yeah that brought that brought life back into the monarch right well so i was i was gonna start by saying it seems like it's sad for everyone involved the first story right like right it sort of goes to show right uh you can try to be earthly but you can't get away from that love right that's too powerful right and then it's tough because you feel bad for everyone. You feel bad for Camilla because she was never able to 
be the person. You feel bad for Charles because he had to put duty over love. Right. And you feel bad for Princess Diana who wanted to find her. She It was arranged as much for her as it was for him. Right. It was. And she, he, he at least had the benefit of feeling love and not being able to have You're it right. than to feel what or to think what you about to have, think what you're going to have is love and then it's not right um and to imagine that your life is going to be that now because i think that's a lot like especially with the arranged marriage stuff i'm not a, a big person for like uh you only live once but it's like things like that where you really think about it like that's it if you go through yeah. life only caring about duty then you'll your life will, will come and go and you'll never be able to experience certain things like mm-hmm. fine in love. But then back to what you just said, there is so much beauty that was created from it. Right. Besides the passing of, of Princess Dion, Diana, Diana. Diana so what, what's what's right? What's wrong? Right. Um, Do, does it come to the idea of like, don't repeat that? Like we can we can change going forward and put love first or does it lean to the side of everything happens for a reason it's hard to tell because you now have prince harry like what who's going for love and everyone's mad at him for shirking his duties yeah and and yeah and it's like what if you know if people believe in fate right and everyone does have a, a fine like everyone's on this earth for they have a purpose and stuff mm-hmm. If you look at the end situation, in a way, everyone, everything did work out, right? Like, right. the the love of, of Charles and if you take out any kind of um, secret murdering of, of Diana, right. make it all just happen, huge coincidence. Maybe Diana was only ever meant to be on this earth for 29 years. I think she was, she was <clears throat> probably before, in her 40s. Before she was called back to heaven. Yeah, she was definitely in her 40s. And so she had children and she had love. Charles and Camilla had a marriage. I don't know. I also feel weird about saying, like, you were meant to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wasn't meant to die. But but when you say, like, you know, maybe it was coincidence she died. It's not. It, she didn't. She didn't wake up dead or drink her tea and fall over. Uh there was no social media at the time. Yeah. Okay. And even when you see old videos of mm-hmm. Diana and she's she's talking and she's saying it's so hard to be so looked at. <coughs> it's so hard to be on the cover of every magazine. It's so hard to have photographers chasing me. And if you look at that with with um, like Gen Z brain, you it's kind of extremely alien to you because you think that's what everybody wants. Little yeah. babies know how to take selfies and like. You know, everyone has their own social media accounts where it's like, I'll show you what I had for dinner. I'll show you, yeah. you know, what I'm wearing. OOTD. At that time, that did not exist. So. Um, Twofold. Yeah, yeah. One, it, it didn't exist. And so you were the only person that was being looked at. Right. And two, what is happening now with it is in a way countering, counter happening what was happening then which is this is who you are every we had a whole brand a brand podcast that was about like your personal brand right and now it's let me show the world who i am and who i want to be with the royal families you know um for the people who like don't you know you have your 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 harry and Meghan markle and princess diana it was you can can you imagine being in a role and then that Look what you're wearing. Look what you're doing. When none of it's even your choice, right? It's and that's it, what happens. So you got it. Yeah, that's what happens. And 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 to feel like you're screaming and you know nobody can hear you. So when she died, she was like even when you see celebrities now, when we do have social media and everybody has a phone, you still see people will crush on uh, who's a big star that will show up on a street or a restaurant. Um. Will show up, just not, just a star, <laughs> <laughs> a star. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, Leonardo. Okay, so if Leonardo DiCaprio um, shows up somewhere, 
there still be, ooh, uh, people start running towards him, right? Or photographing him. Or Maybe it should be someone younger. Younger? Okay. Yeah. How about, how, how about Harry Styles? Uh, give me Harry Styles. <laughs> okay. Harry Styles. Okay. Harry Styles, he just finished singing in New York and yes. he's... He's even though New York, I think, is a little nicer than than L.A. But so anyway, crush a crowd is yeah, crush trying a crowd. To, crush a crowd is trying to get to him. That's with social media. OK, yeah. she at a time of no social media, she was eating in a restaurant in Paris. And all of the paparazzi she she was with she was with um, Dodi Fayed, which is uh, his family owned a very big and very expensive um, department store in London. Mm-hmm. So it was like these two huge figures. So the, the pictures are going to sell. If I can get, if I, because I have a camera, people don't have camera phones, but I'm, I actually have a camera. If I can get a picture of Princess Diana with Dodi Fayed, I'm going to get paid a lot of money, right? So all of the photographers were crushing the restaurant. She ran out the back door. She got in her car, you know, with the driver and, you know, and started Zooming. The people were undeterred. They're chasing her on motorbikes and cars. Ch-ch-ch-ch. Trying to get a shot because it's money. It's it's like running, you know, when um, you know, someone's throwing money out of the car and like, yeah. you know, everyone's pulling over. Like it's it was trying to get money. The driver was intoxicated. He drove too fast. He went around a curve under a tunnel in Paris. He crashed the car. So that's quite a very intricate setup. Yeah. But but people just hear like, oh, I heard the queen. Had something to do with it. And it's like, that's, I I don't know the truth, but it just seems so reasonable that she was in an extremely dangerous situation. Yeah. And, and if anything, right, like, you know, there was pop, like everyone knew where she was and stuff. Right. I think it would be more suspicious if it was, she was alone on her island right. and, and she had a cardiac arrest. Right. But to plan. Which she has, which there were pictures before that, which I think she was on his yacht alone out at sea and like some paparazzi had taken like telescope telescopic yeah. lens photos you know and she didn't accidentally drown or anything yeah so it's like and it's one of those things where it's twofold people say what a coincidence that it was in a tunnel that no one saw and it just you know but you could equally switch it and say the reason of the coincidence was why it happened it was in a tight tunnel right. where there was no room for error right. driving. Right. You know, uh, if you are driving fast and pull too far to the right on a on a big road, right, you go onto the shoulder. Right. If you pull too far into the right in a tunnel, you're hitting the side. Right. All right. I've I no longer think she was killed. Yeah. So my original thing, Autumn is um, <laughs> one of her. her uh, Peter is her oldest grandchild. He's he's now in his forties. Her. The oldest grandchild is like 44, I think, which is Peter, and he just divorced um, Autumn. Her youngest, gra- Queen Elizabeth, her youngest grandchild, James, he's 14. So she has a big span of um, age there. But grandchild? Yeah, grandchild. Uh, okay. So and Charles. And then there's great grandchildren. Okay. Yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah. So we are turning into the royal. Uh, yeah. Here. Well, it's just um something. Broken you know, crown. <laughs> oh, I like. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, okay, any other time it would be niche. How do you say that? Niche? I say niche. I think that's how you're supposed to say it. I say niche and I'm sure that's wrong. Yeah. But any other time it would be You'll niche. say drowned with the D at the end. Me? Yeah. I know. Um, but at this time, when you had 500 world leaders come to her funeral, I don't think that's niche. Ni- niche, that's something that'd be hard to ignore happened in the world. Yeah. And she was an extreme Christian. Extreme Christian sounds like an extremist. She was extremely... Well, the, the crown has been known. <laughs> she was extremely um, passionate about her Christianity. and um, Which is it, always interesting to me. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think we've talked about it before in passing, but not. I don't want to say it makes sense, because it makes sense that anyone can find God, but I don't even think... Jesus would disagree with some of the things he said that hard, it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven. Mm. And so to be a lifelong queen of a monarch right. at you know England, I mean, <clears throat> you can imagine maybe not when she was born because like, you had other superpowers like America and Germany, but um, that she was, she was raised being known that she is... Especially at that time, yeah. Yeah, basically at the top... Right. Of the pyramid of, and and you you are treated 
godly, right? right? With with the the servitude and the not worship, but the, but the, the sort of and to still have God in your life. It, it, I'm just saying it, it definitely has to be a lot more difficult. Yes. To not there's people you, you meet on the street that'll have a bit of a messiah complex. So I always I always find it interesting. Um we the one word Wednesday is position of power. The one word Wednesday is position of power. And um you know she obviously had a position of power uh close in hand with royalty especially in Britain. Yeah. Uh, clergy has a position of power. The Archbishop of Can- Archbishop of Canterbury position of power um not just in Britain, but in the UK, United Kingdom, but in um, around the world. He is the one that said that because he was like her um, close clergy um, confidant. Yeah. And he, how he said how um, how Christian she was. The power that you said that she had when she first came on, when she was born. And first then when, came on the scene. <laughs> when she was born and then when she, she did, you know, become queen in, in her 20s, which was the 50s, I guess. Um it's different now. Uh, England has lost all of most of its territories, and things are very, very different. Um, but there's something called soft power now. Do you know what soft power is? It's a soft power, and it's um, it's it's. I think the easiest way that you can think of it is influence. It's having influence, not by coercion. From what I read, it seems like I want to say like by example, but that's not even good enough. It's kind of like. So, so, so the, so the uh, royal family has soft power. They're not presidents, prime ministers, but because, because of their culture and their, I want, like, I keep thinking the word example, but people want to follow them. People want to be like them. People want to invite them. And it's called soft power because you are, um, instead of coercion, it's co-op or something. It's, uh, it is a way to influence people, but it's not through force or money, maybe? So, like, the Pope would have soft power? Probably, like, yeah. Outside of Catholicism. Right. In, in Catholicism, he has ultimate power. Right. But no, you're right. when you see him meeting with presidents and stuff, why they have no legal obligation to listen to anything he says, but he has that soft right. power of you want to listen to him. Right. Well, even if you're not a, a, you know, a Christian, because it's like separation of church and state, why are you talking to him? It's... This soft power because people follow them because they are in a position to hopefully do the right thing. Right. And to be a power in their own entity. Right. And so therefore they have a soft power. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, especially, uh, I, I was reading about it, and especially in this time where you can be found out to be a phony or, yeah. you know, you can be found out to try to be doing po- propaganda. Yeah. If you are the type of person that, or yeah, I guess, yeah, it would always be a person, I'm guessing, or like an entity, a family, that you can try to look us up. And, it, you know, I'm saying if you're like this kind of, um, this, I don't know, like a righteous person, that is a powerful position to be in. Yeah. Because it's not if I have nukes or I have, you know. Yeah. And I think there's something to it um with like lineage right because there can be a bad king or queen or someone in the royal family right or there can be a pope that's uh you know like there's question marks on the la- on pope benedict of why he resigned and stuff but i think the nice thing about these soft power positions is that is part of it if you're a new person on the scene you can go a wall you can you right. can do a random thing right you can you don't know what to expect but when you're in a like an, an, a, a grouping, whether it is a family or it is the lineage of popes, you are going against a pope way. Right. You're going against what the monarchy believes in. And so you're almost also held accountable to that standard. Right. If like a, a Joe Schmo gets into the soft power, like gets into this high ranking position, it's just him. He can do whatever he wants. Right. And there's nothing that's stopping the new thing he's being to just be a part of him. Right. In these soft power positions, if they do something off kilter, you're going against the generations of how the soft power was formed, which right. is like outliers, outliers, but we have a general 
motto that we live by and we're going to try to uphold. Right. Same, and that, I think that's why popes would fall into the same category. Yeah. You've had terrible popes. They're great popes, but it's like they're all trying to go along a line. And so they get that soft power because it's like you are like, you know, what is it? time tested. Yeah. Or gen generally trying to do the right thing. Right. And I think those two examples are good. The the, the Pope, uh, you know, the Vatican and um, the royal family where I feel that they have gotten better over time. So like they're 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 maintaining an influence. But but uh, just like, you know, I said I read something about this whole, you know, that funeral took 10 days. It, yeah. was, it was all through the land. They. They carried that body. Um, and I've read that, you know, the the, uh, the monarch has exchanged power for for theater. Mm. But I would I would counter that with and same thing with the Pope. I feel that they they value the power enough that they are changing, you know, because because the Vatican, you know, the used to be more violent and, and, and as did the monarchy. Yeah. But. Yeah, is it a why is this still around or is it this would always still be around but they are now seeing we're meant to take a step back. Right. Popes are no longer running Europe right. with an iron fist. Right. And is that because uh, they don't have power anymore or is it because they still have that power and progressively are using it in a way of we're not that you learn from generations before you. Right. Um, and you, you see you want to go away and is a part of of knowing what to do with power not using all the might of it right you know? yeah and i think i think the lessons can be learned for everybody in in um thinking about that yeah. because um preston he is now position of power he, he's a manager right shout at, out he's a manager at a, at a at a supermarket he had a manager meeting and the manager meeting said we can't keep people Okay, I'm 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 hiring six people a week and we're being left with one at the end of the week. Like, what do people suggest we do? So Preston said some people had some lame answers and he said positivity. And he said everyone was quiet and the guy looked at him like, Who are you? <laughs> he is like the youngest manager there. And he said, positivity. He said, There's um you need good morale. The people here complain so much and there's just a lot of just negativity and yeah. um, and unhappiness. The, the guy was like, wrong. What we need to do is we need to clamp down more. We need to write them up. We need to, you know, all this kind of stuff. And that's fine because he's the bigger up in that situation. But I don't think Preston's wrong. And just like so what we're talking about, the old way of thinking is force. It's demerits. It's mm -hmm. detention. It's But you, I feel that it's not... The way, because you know, like take take the monarch for example, monarchy for example, they don't they no longer have power, but they still have influence. Not because they're threatening people. No, and I think I think a lot of the threatening is fear based. Yes. All right. You, you threaten because you don't, you can't handle <clears throat> it. Well, you, you, and you threaten because you think if you don't, you're going to lose. You think if you if you don't threaten your employees, they're going to take advantage That's of you. That's exactly what. The guy said at the meeting they're going to take advantage they will take advantage and, and it's 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 all based in fear and if you look at any a uh, uh, high sort of power authority that doesn't take that approach why why uh, why are they so successful and without that it's because if you're leading and you, and you don't have this fear then you're being followed for the right reasons and then what's a uh like it goes to show the actual support, right? Like, I mean, look at Jesus. There was no fear. Why? Because he had a strong enough, like he had a strong enough pull to him. Right. That there is no fear of of people no army, leaving. No army, no weapons. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's. Well, Biden is our president. Should I quickly just finish with, with Biden and how I feel about this? Um, how I feel about him. How I feel about this, this dumb Irishman. So, you know, he's actually, his family is back to uh, Mayo. Oh, really? Our, our county. We related to him. I know. So, County I Mayo. I I recognized him he, from somewhere. He, he, uh, he first met Queen Elizabeth back when he was like a senator, a young senator of <coughs> Delaware or whatever. Yeah. His Irish Pennsylvania mother was like, don't you dare bow to her. Right? 
Irish because she's English. He said, I won't. And he never did. Okay. And I'm sure the Irish love that. They did. He really leans into it. Yeah. Listen, I'm not here for it. So Biden went to the funeral. I saw him. Um, there was the, the casket was in um, Westminster. And he came. I was like watching to see what he would do. You bow, bow. He didn't bow. bow. He blessed himself. And then he put his hand over his heart. Uh, Side of respect. But I just thought like you just said fear based. Like what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. You know. And the one that we haven't really brought this back to spirituality. But I think so much of leadership, you know, the whole like the epitome of, of leadership is, is God. And Jesus in human form. Yeah. <clears throat> and how many stories do we get of this over and over again? Washing of the feet. Do it. No, I'll do it for you. This this servitude boggles the mind of the fear-based people. It, that's what Preston's at, at the meeting thinking like Jesus. It's like we be kind to them <clears throat> or, or we help them out. It's like, no, they'll take advantage. Right. Or this, that's the same mindset that was saying, you cannot wash their feet. Like, the, the, those, right. the, how will they ever think of you as a God if you're washing their feet? And it's like, because that's what, that's, that's what a God would do. Right. Uh, that, that's, what, that's what unconditional love will do. And guess what? All, all the leaders who, who were, would refuse to touch the, the foot of someone to, if it threatened their, if it, they thought it threatened their authority, they're forgotten about. Right. And, and the highest, right. the highest leader that we can imagine, and you know, even the the Pope still does it to this day for You're that right. symbolism You're right. of, I have no. It's just like someone who's comfortable in their masculinity doing like having to do less, and it's like because I know who I am. It's when you are a true leader, you know who you are, right? And and you never feel threatened by caring about the people that are following you. Mm-hmm. One more thing. Mike drop, Mike pick back up. Mike <laughs> One more thing. When she was finally, in the, the, like I said, the, the, the proceedings took all the whole time, but Monday was the final, final, final. And before they lowered the casket, they took off the um, the jeweled scepter and they placed it, they took it off the coffin, they took off the crown and they took off the orb because um, it was, she was, she was a simple Christian woman. So oh. that was her earthly job. And now that's over. Is that a monarchy thing or is that a her thing? Probably monarchy because you don't want to lose all your jewels. But it was still beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, it goes back to how, how you live with being a queen for all the time and, yeah. and God. And, it's, and I think it's also good because for the people watching, Charles, who's next, and then William and then George, this is just this is just a job that you came into and you'll pass out of. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's part of it. I think that's. Just to summarize everything about position of power, it's position of powers are, are good to lead by example, but to remember that <clears throat> in the grand scheme of things, we are all the same, right? right? And, and, and when she was laid to rest, she's laid to rest as a sister of ours in life. Right. And not a, when we go to heaven, it's not the queen's going to be there and I'm right. going to be the servant. It's going to be, we are both sis- sisters. Shout out, sis. Sister, sister. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Um, see you tomorrow. Stop kissing that. Peace. Peace.